Inventions. Throughout time, humans, regardless of where they were, have invented several products, ideas, and services. And these ideas have shaped the way our societies develop, grow, and how we live our lives. In this video, I want to talk about a few of those key inventions, what they were, where they happened, and who made them, and how they impacted human life. But there's an issue we need to immediately address. First, sometimes inventions were made in various places by various people. The idea for a parachute dates back hundreds of years before it was actually invented. The printing press was developed in many places at the same time. In some cases, inventions stem from specific individuals and the fact they happen to be German, Chinese, French, or Portuguese is simply a coincidence, which makes attributing them to a country a little illogical. Even if the countries played an active role in creating the settings for those inventions to be possible, a lot of times the country in which they were developed existed in a different way. When the printing press was invented in Europe, in Germany, it wasn't the Germany we know today. So take these three disclaimers into account. There are an almost never-ending amount of inventions that have taken place throughout history, so I had to select a few interesting ones for this video. If you'd like to see any others covered, let me know in the comments. We'll be taking a look at six inventions, starting with the ones on the thumbnail. First, the printing press. In case you don't know, the printing press is a mechanical machine which essentially transfers ink onto paper. It was the first semi-automatic way of doing it and allowed for thousands of copies of the same text to be made, as opposed to before when they had to be copied by hand. Its invention and global spread is considered one of the most influential events of its millennium. And this is a good example of different stages of invention, because the invention that triggered the widespread use of printing was made in 1440 by a goldsmith named Johannes Gutenberg, who invented a type of of printing press that was modeled off the design of an existing one, a sort of screw press. So despite the invention being rightfully credited to him, it apparently was based on something else. And the oldest known printer even originates in China during the first millennium AD. Gutenberg's press was a movable one, starting in a small print shop in the city of Mainz in Germany, although at the time it was part of the Holy Roman Empire. In this very detailed map I found online, you can look at the mess of a territory that Germany was at the time. But his device quickly spread throughout all of Germany and then Europe. In less than 50 years, it was present in over 270 cities throughout all of Europe's major kingdoms. The worldwide spread of the printing press meant a greater distribution of ideas that threatened the power structures of the time. In 1501, Pope Alexander VI even promised excommunication for anyone who printed manuscripts without the church's approval. And 20 years later, books from Martin Luther spread throughout Europe, expanding the Protestant church against the Vatican. All of this and so much more happened the way it did because of Gutenberg's invention. Although in this case, despite the fact that Germans were then known for being good printers and experts in this new technology, it seems the state slash country had no direct influence in its creation. The same can't be said for the next invention though, which comes from China, print money. The first banknotes were used in China in the 7th century during the Tang dynasty. Chinese merchants would issue what are today called promissory notes, essentially receipts that prove they had money in the bank, which could then then be withdrawn by whoever they were purchasing from. So essentially checks, I guess. The creation of this method was to avoid having to carry gigantic bags of copper coins in large purchases. Before we keep going on with the video, a one minute message from the best app out there, Blinkist. Guys, if you don't know Blinkist yet, then it's probably the first time you watch a video from the channel because they're a long time sponsor and honestly, I'm glad they are because their app is incredible. Blinkist is an app where you can listen or read the summaries of thousands of nonfiction books. Do you want to learn more? more by reading but don't have the time or attention span to do it, look no further. Blinkist takes the key points out of a book and condenses them into the main ideas you need to take away from them, allowing you to get the essential knowledge of each work in only around 15 minutes. There's over 25 different categories with hundreds if not thousands of books in each. I was browsing the society and culture one and found a great book called Collapse which talks about how societies fail, talking about the examples of failed civilizations throughout history. If you want to try it out, go to Blinkist.com general knowledge, the link is in the description, and you'll get one free week to use the app and also a 25% discount after that if you choose to continue your membership. Thanks to them for sponsoring the channel, and now back to the video. True paper money that didn't just represent a deposit but actually had value itself was called Jiaozi and was created during the Song Dynasty. By 960, the Song government was running out of copper to make coins, and so it issued the first generally circulating note.
notes, but they were still used as a guarantee of value, just not in representation of a deposit. So they didn't replace coins, but were used alongside them. By the 1120s, the central government started to produce its own state-issued paper money, using woodblock printing, by the way, the predecessor to Gutenberg's printing method. Soon after, European merchants began doing the same, either using the same line of thought that it would be a useful solution for carrying large sums around, or through direct influence. In the 13th century, explorer Marco Polo wrote how the Khan of the Mongol Empire used paper money. And so, Imperial China began a trend that was soon picked up by the entire world, and which we use up to today, even though physical money becomes less and less used. Moving on to the parachutes. The oldest parachute design appears in an anonymous manuscript from 1470s Italy during the Renaissance. And it's incredible that that image is available, as we see here. It shows a strange looking device, not at all like the parachutes we know today, but the concept is there. Leonardo da Vinci also sketched out a parachute idea shortly after, a more triangular design, which according to the historians of technology, was a much more elaborate idea and marks the origin of the parachute as we know it. But it was still just that, a concept, not yet proven or generally used. Essentially, the idea was had, but the product was not invented. The modern parachute was only invented in the late 18th century by Louis Sébastien Lenormand in France, who made the first recorded public jump in 1783. Lenormand also coined the word parachute by combining the Italian prefix para, a form of parare, meaning to avert or to stop, and shoot, the French word for fall, a device that would stop the fall, or I guess more accurately ease the fall. Further development of the parachute focused on it becoming more compact, which again demonstrates how an invention is usually not a single aha moment, but rather a sequence of improvements made step by step, sometimes by different people in different places. The initial linen material of parachutes was then replaced by an improved silk. Details to the fabric were added to become more aerodynamic. Over a hundred years later, two key world events allowed for the quick development of this invention, the World Wars. The experience with parachutes during the war highlighted the need to develop a design that could be reliably used to exit a disabled airplane. And so they developed it further and further. Initially a concept, then proven and actually invented by the Frenchman in 1783, further developed by many and extensively by governments during times of war. One invention that had a great deal of influence by the country in which it took place is an old one, the astrolabe. And I might be mispronouncing this, but I couldn't find the correct way to do it. The astrolabe was invented in Portugal in around the 11th century, although their invention was a metallic one, given that a less accurate wooden one already existed in the Arab world. Metal astrolabes avoided the warping that large wooden ones were prone to, allowing the construction of larger and therefore more accurate instruments. The Portuguese needed this better accuracy because they wanted to venture out into the open sea, and this allowed them to measure the latitude of where they were, using the positioning of the stars. The Portuguese kingdom was heavily invested in this due to their need to expand out into the oceans, and I think the invention is actually credited to the kingdom in general, rather than one specific individual. The development of this tool, along with other inventions of the Portuguese at this time, such as the Caravo, a type of ship that was small but resistant to open sea storms storms using triangular sails allowed them to venture out into the oceans, opening Europe to the world and paving the way for all the colonial empires that European countries had. Another invention that seems to come directly from a country is the tank. The first armored vehicle ever created was made in Great Britain. The tank was invented in 1911 when Winston Churchill, then Home Secretary, ordered the design of a vehicle that could withstand shrapnels and bullets, flattened barbed wire and cross trenches and muds. It was at the time a need that the British government had to assure its victory in wars, and so the state took direct action in inventing it. And finally, arguably one of the most important inventions in human history, without which the first industrial revolution wouldn't have happened, the steam engine. In case you don't know, because I honestly didn't, a steam engine is an engine that performs mechanical work using steam as its working fluid. The first recorded rudimentary steam-powered engine was the Aelopile, described by Hero of Alexandria, a Greek mathematician and engineer in Roman Egypt in the first century. But the first commercial steam-powered device was a water pump, developed in 1698 by Thomas Savory in England. The steam engine helped to power the Industrial Revolution. Before it, most factories and mills were powered by water, wind, horse, or men. In about 1712, another 
other Englishman, Thomas Newcomen, developed a more efficient steam engine, with a piston separating the condensing steam from the water. This engine was immediately used in mines, pumping stations, and supplying water to water wheels, powering the textile machinery, effectively allowing a gigantic boost of British industry and then of other countries as well. And the steam engine became more and more efficient with all of these improvements, especially the one made by James Watt in 1778, which made them smaller and needed less coal. There was no direct influence of the British state in this invention, however I think we can argue that its development was unlikely to take place in any other place in the world, at least at this time, because it was in Great Britain that the conditions for the Industrial Revolution were created. Britain had financial institutions in place such as a central bank to finance new factories, and with the existence of these new factories there was a need for the invention and improvement of the steam engine, and in the war against Napoleon the Royal Navy even encouraged and powered new mass manufacturing methods allowing us to argue for somewhat of a direct intervention even. So, those are a few interesting inventions that have taken place throughout history. Sometimes the person who invented a product in one place could have easily done it in another, but in some cases the specific conditions or support created by a country's specific situation played a great role. Like I said at the start, if you know of any other interesting inventions that you would like to see covered in a video like this, just let me know in the comments along with your opinions about these ones. Thanks so much for watching this video, subscribe if you want, and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.